I think you will find tonight's message a very practical one. Something that all should really have and apply. The whole of life is just the appeasement of hunger and the number of states of consciousness by which the individual can think and view the world are purely a means of satisfying that hunger. I say this because your state of consciousness is always being externalized. If you know how to move from your present state, if you dislike it, to the state that you would like to externalize, then you have the secret. And that is what I attempt tonight to tell you. For the only states of consciousness pushed out. Everything in this world, and all are contained within the individual. Now in the Bible we speak of prayer, and Prayer to the world means begging, but not in the Bible. It's thanksgiving. It's praise. It's not petition. We speak in the Bible of repentance. And the world thinks that it means to regret, to be remorseful. That's not what the Bible teaches. Prayer and repentance are almost synonymous terms. We are told to bear fruit that befits repentance. Then they say that the central character of the scripture, you and your disciples eat and drink with sinners. And he replied, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Leave the righteous alone. They're so self-satisfied. They're like themselves. Don't leave them alone. The word sin has nothing to do with breaking any moral code. The word sin means to miss the mark. That's what it means. You have a goal in life and you haven't achieved it, well then you are sinning. You may have a billion dollars and still are hungry for another. Well then, if you don't have the other, you are sinning. You may keep all the so-called codes of the world imposed upon you by the priesthood of the world. That would mean nothing, as far as the scriptures go. To repent is simply a radical change of attitude. That is what repentance means. For if I radically change my attitude towards life, I will then view the world and see the world from that change of attitude. And that change is a change of consciousness. And that change will be externalized in my world. Now repentance is at once man's responsibility and a gift of God. I better show you what I mean by it. He said, I and my father are one. Yet I go to my father, for my father is greater than I. We are one, yet my father is greater than I. So I go to my father. How do we arrive at this strange, peculiar statement? And how, what does it mean? In the office of the saint, I am not inferior to my essential being defender but only in the office of the saint I am restricted and must live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in the sender. It's myself, the Father, for I and my Father are one. But when I am sent into this world to experience death and to experience the restriction of man, I am seemingly inferior to myself, the sender. So, when I repent, I go to the sender. I first do what I have to do. So I say repentance is at once a responsibility of man and a gift from God. So then what is my responsibility? I want to change my world. 
Well, then I ask myself, what would I see if it would change? How would I see the world if my world was exactly as I want it to be? How, do I, how would I see it? Well, then see it. In my mind's eye, conjure a scene which would imply that it is true. Live as though it were true. In my mind's eye, I know I can't make it so. But in the depth of my own being, the Father, he has the power to make it so. So now I go to my Father. How do I go to my Father? I first of all do what I am called upon to do. I enact the scene implying the fulfillment of my dream. And then I turn it over completely in thanksgiving to him. It is myself, my essential being. But it transcends my reasoning mind. I do not know on this level how it can be done. But I do know that if I have faith in him, which is my own self, it will be done in my will. So we are told in scripture, without faith it is impossible to please him. And those who are drawn near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. I must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Well, without faith, it is impossible to please him. What is faith? The same chapter in Hebrews defines faith for us. Faith is the assurance of things not seen. The evidence of things hoped for. By faith we understand that the very worlds were created by the word of God. So that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear. Well, in my world it hasn't yet appeared. I say it all is contained within my imagination. So I will enact the scene which would imply that it's real. And then, within myself, I give thanks. Now, we are told the most wonderful prayer ever uttered, we find in the book of John, the 11th chapter. He stands at the gate of death and he raised his eyes and said thank you father that thou hast heard me i knew that you always hear me well i can't deny that the depth of my own being is hearing what i am doing what i am inwardly saying so i can truly say father thank you he certainly heard what i said but well, is it now supported by some statement of scripture? Yes, again in John, but now in his letter, the first letter. And in this he said, If we believe that he hears us in whatever we ask of him, we know that we have already obtained the request made of him. If I can simply assume that I am the man that I would like to be, but certainly the depth of my own being has seen that assumption. He has heard that assumption. But now can I actually believe that that's all I need you? Well, I have to confess that I can't do it on this level. I am not wise enough on this level to devise the means necessary to externalize what I have assumed that I am. Well, have you proved it, Neville? unnumbered times unnumbered times when I was completely shut out on certain areas imprisoned as it were not in the federal prisons but a state of imprisonment to find yourself on an island where you enjoyed four months of it almost five months but you have a commitment in America and you've got to get back and then to be told that there is no possibility of return until the very earliest September. And that will be the very earliest. And your commitment is in Milwaukee in the first week of May. 